Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a great night and I'm really excited to be here seeing everyone connected to this program. And so today I'm going to be sharing on a title that I've used widely for a lot of um, discussion that I've held about one editor and our core theme, which is women and data changing Africa's story. So basically, how can we as women leverage data to change Africa's story? How are we doing it at Code for Africa with our one editor community? And you know what this means in you know in empowering women and positioning them to become change makers across different sectors. So um, next slide. My name is Adibo Isaac. And a lot of people call me Ada or Ada, anyone is fine. And I'm a product manager at Code for Africa. I product manage our One Editor initiative and also oversee our hack hackers communities and um, support a lot of the civic technology. Sorry, I know that. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. That's fine. I uh, support a lot of the civic technology initiatives that we have at Code for Africa. Uh, on data journalism, open government, and also I support partnership development across um, the Africa region. Next slide. So today I would focus on three core areas, and that would be um, just an overview of Code for Africa and Wana Data, how we use data for storytelling, which is basically what we do with uh, Wana Data community, and some of our success stories and projects that we've worked on, some awards as well, so that you know I can showcase some of the impact that we've had over time. So, what is Code for Africa? We are a uh, the sorry, I know that next slide. But yeah, Code for Africa is the continent's largest indigenous um, network of civic technology and digital journalism labs. We have over 80 full-time staff and we are located across 20 African countries. We have so many initiatives that you know, we are implementing in the continent. Uh, one editor is one of them, like I mentioned. And we also have the Africa Drone Network. We have the census program. We have the iLab forensic analysis team that is focused on forensic um, investigation. We also have the fact-checking initiative that is called Besser Check and um, we have emerging uh, communities and networks that we're setting up in order to broaden our horizon and the work that we are doing in Africa. So what is One Adita? One Adita is simply uh, the Pan-African network of women data journalists, data scientists, and data technologists. And we are over 500 uh, members across seven countries. We have um, different chapters in these seven countries, and we work with these women to um, basically liberate data, um, liberate gender data to tell stories about the different social issues that are happening across the continent. So next slide showcases uh, the flags of some of the countries where we are. So we are in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Senegal, Cameroon, and South Africa. So this means that we have chapters across all of these countries and we have meetups, empowerment programs, we have initiatives that we work with one editor members in these countries. And what we do is build ecosystem. So we understand that empowering women is actually one of the keys to um, you know, bringing about change in our society. So we bring together women from different sectors, from journalism, science, research, and we empower them with data analysis and digital storytelling skills in order to amplify their voices and help them win decision-making roles, you know, that are previously dominated by men. We also position the community in a way that, you know, there is fair networking, there is self-help and collaboration between the women from the different sectors. So we are also focused on liberating gender data. Next slide. So, you know, when you look at data across like different reports or even when you look deeply at COVID-19 uh, and, and a lot of the reports that happened last year, you see that data is often sexist. Looking deep into the recently launched reports of, of the global uh, media monitoring project, you would find that a lot of the you know, data was skewed towards men. And this is because you know, issues such as you know, economic and, and social economic role, earnings, et cetera, were analyzed. And you would see that the reports you know, basically focused on the male gender. So part of what we are passionate about is to liberate gender data 
and we we are currently working on different projects and initiatives that are focused on you know spearheading the African efforts to find and liberate data in order to give holistic actionable insights. So I will just go right into what we do in terms of you know leveraging data for storytelling and beyond. So I start with some definitions, very simple ones. What is data journalism? It is the process of extracting useful information from data, writing articles based on the information and embedding visualization in the articles that help readers understand the significance of a story and allow them to pinpoint the data that relates to them. This is a definition by Begley's and Brattas and it basically summarizes it. Data journalism is basically taking data, presenting it in a format that people will understand in order to actually drive change. Now, there is also another part, which is data visualization, right? Data visualization, which is a subcomponent of data journalism, or you can look at it broadly from the perspective of what do you do with data in your sector? As a researcher, as a social science expert, you know, how do you present data in order to uh, maximize its, its potential impact. So data visualization is the definition that would you know, portray that. It is the graphical representation of information and data by using visual elements like charts, graphs, and maps. Data visualization tools provide an accessible way to see and understand trends, outliers, patterns in data. And now, so this is a definition from Tableau. It's basically how you present your data in order to pass across the insight that you're trying to portray or to position whatever you know outputs that you're producing in a way that people can understand, connect, and actually you know, work towards leveraging that resource for impact. Now there's some of the other, you know, there are some of some reasons why we we um, you know visualize data, why we incorporate data into our work next life. And one of the very first one is to ensure data exploration. That data is explored in a way that data is explored in a way that is used to study its characteristics, to spot anomaly, discover patterns, or even study a hypothesis. Uh, visualization is one of the easiest ways for us to explore data. So if you look at this slide here, it is showing a visualization that we made of women in national parliaments, right? So we, we would see that the blue is the number of men, while the yellow is the number of women. It is also used to convey information. So just looking at this visual representation tells us that, oh, you know, in, in the national parliament, there are more men than women. So because our brain easily connects with, you know, visualization, it is a lot easier, it's a lot easier to communicate, you know, data using visualization. And there are so many different ways that you can present your data. You know, you can use uh, bar charts, next slide. You can use bar charts, you can use pair charts, um, donut charts, line charts, histogram, and maps. You know, these different kinds of charts help portray data in different ways. And these are like, you know, some of the ways that we incorporate data in our story and in the work that we do with um, one at a time members. So in the next slide, I'm going to showcase some of the projects that we've worked on, right? The, this, this project is called uh, the Water Quality Data Journalism Project. We worked on it with two one editor members, and they produced, you know, reports around the issues that are, um, you know, plaguing the Makoko community in Lagos, in Lagos, Nigeria. This is post a mapping project that we did on Makoko in order to map out the community, and then we created this um, project with one editor members. And um, Amelda, please, I'll be dropping a screen just to quickly go through some of the visualizations that we made. Uh, with uh, one editor members uh, uh, for, for this project. So I just dropped a link in our chat on Slack, if you can just project the link. So the next slide um, you know, refers to this link. We made uh, a flourish story. No, not this one. The last one I just sent. Sorry about that. Yes, great. So we made a flourish story for this project. And so in terms of how we work with one editor members, right? 
we just before I go into the story, I like to explain. So for each chapter, we have meetups where we train them through series of subjects and skills and um, areas that would empower them with you know, data and digital storytelling skills, or how to wrangle data, how to visualize data, how to find data, and how to collect data. And then post the meetups, we have Pan-African um, meetings where we invite, um, you know, renowned speakers or experts in their sector in order to empower them, motivate them, you know, tell them about how they, they can go about changing the um, you know, the approach of decision makers or how they've achieved impact in the sector to motivate them. Then another, another um, you know, step that we take is then to work with them on projects. And these projects will provide them with fellowships and grants and mentorship in order for them to be able to apply this skill set and this, you know, topics that we've trained them on. So now this is one of them, like I was saying. So this is a flourish visualization that we created with a one editor member. They, they receive mentorship from our knowledge team, which is, you know, the knowledge team is, is part of the, is the umbrella team of, of our community initiatives. And we work on a lot of data visualization, wrangling support, et cetera. So this is investigating the access of, the, of um, access to quality water in Makuku. Next. Yes. Great, so here we summarize the water points that we analyzed. Then next, I'll quickly run through this because I see I have very short time left. Yes, so here, this is a typical visualization. It is basically putting together all the numbers that we collected from that community, like all the data points, and presenting it in a way that tells us the story. So if this is an outline of the maximum capacity of water tanks available to families across the Makoko water. So each color indicates the treatment method used you know, by those families. And when you click on it, then you can see what is the name of that sub-community or that um, um, family group, and then what is their treatment method, what is the estimated, you know, dependent number of families on, on that treatment water, and the capacity of water tank, you know, to those families. What this tells us is, if you, if you look at the numbers, you will see some are, some are really large zeros, while some are very tiny dots, and then when you, see, you look at it, you see where the problem exists, right? It's easy to say, okay, there is need for emergency response in this community, that community, because what it's a very large group, or maybe they have access to no treatment, you know, they are basically drinking bad water. You know, this just basically drives decision making. Next slide. So here we summarize the key insights of the water treatment survey. Next slide. Uh, there's another visualization that I want to talk about. Yes, so this is another visualization that analyzes water usage and the treatment, right? So they use water for, for cooking, drinking, and other domestic activities. And then for cooking, only 6% uh, uh, of you know, community members uh, boil their water, 7 use co coagulation, uh, 38 use decantation, um, 13 filtration, and 35% um, use nothing. So, so they just collect the water and use it for cooking. So if you go down to drinking, the 3% use nothing to treat their water. And these are really bad water that they are taking in, right? And that is why when you look at some of the statistics around, you know, the health of the of that population, you see a lot of issues that need to be addressed. Okay, so let's go back to the slide so that I can showcase another project that we worked on uh, with one editor members. So this is the, the, the next one. Yes, 17. Yes, the next one. Yes. So this is another project that we worked extensively with one editor members on, Outbreak um, COVID-19 Data Stories Series. My colleague is on the call, Nikesa, if you can drop the link in the chat box so everyone goes through it so that I don't um, spend too much time. But if you go through this link, you'll see over 30 stories, publication reports that we did with one editor members, all of them based on data that we collected in order for us to report the issues that are happening around COVID-19 and across Africa. So we did stories in Tanzania, stories in Nigeria, stories, stories in Kenya, and we basically are portraying, you know, water poverty in Nigeria or making, um, you know, online education accessible or, you know, talking about how children survive landslides, land, land champion um, tree planting in Bunam, 
Munambuti, you know, we made so many reports and articles and publications for, um, you know, for the public, for decision makers, in order for us to, you know, drive um, actionable responses to these issues. And next slide, as a result of this massive project, we, um, we were, you know, selected as the top 10 journalism project. You know, this project was selected as top 10 journalism project in 2020 um, by the Data Journalism um, um, Network. Okay, cool. So we can also share the link to this to this award, but this just shows us, you know, the impact of, of leveraging data to report, so, um, you know, stories and issues. So I'll go right into some of the success stories. So next slide. Sorry, 20, yes, the next tab. Great, thank you. So this one I would like to open. I uh, will share the link quickly with Anelda and we can just quickly go through it. That would be uh, just in two minutes. Yes, so Anelda, the last link I just dropped, if you can please open it. So this is the impact that we have, that we've, we've had with Yes, the impact that we've made on, on, you know, with the community. So this page, I think my colleague can share this link as well, highlights like the impact that we've achieved with one editor members. So these are awards, recognitions, and this is a recent one for Tanita where she was selected for um, reporting grants on digital identity, data and technology. If you open it, you can read more about her, her recent selection. You see one October, the first in Africa to win the freedom of the, in Nigeria, to win the freedom of speech award by the DW. Sorry, sorry, go back and know that. I'm just walking through some of the list in the other page. Yes. You know, this the this is the third one here. Yes, just talking about Toberis Award, the DWS 2020 Freedom of Speech Award. And this is as a result of like you know, series of training, series of collaboration, series of mentorship and fellowship. And we are passionate about this because we want, want to see women, you know, drive social change and societal change. So I will just go to the next slide. And there's also a link that I want to share on that. That is the last project that I would be um, showcasing. Uh, I've just shared it, Anelda. The Pulitzer one. So the the Pulitzer one. Yes. Yeah, so there is the soft drive. There is the fest festival award that we won with um, uh, another partner, one editor partner, and the soft drive was a huge one. Even the fest award, the 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 this awards um, were as a result of of you know. It, a project, an extensive project that we did with a one editor partner. And this project, you know, spanned for a couple of months. It worked with so many women and other stakeholders to collect stories of, you know, what is happening in Africa's, Africa's now river basin and how the communities are displaced for, for profit. So there is a video in this link that I would just play and that would be the last thing that I'll be sharing. So and I would like you can go scroll down a bit more scroll down a bit more. Uh, it showcases a, a visual, uh, a data visualization story as well, not this one, yes, this one. Just play this video and uh, so that we can see what we did with Flourish and how we created a Flourish, um, you know, uh, uh, story out of data that we collected with our partner. You, if you click play, yes, just click on play, yes. Not starting, Ada. Oh, okay. So we can drop the link in the chat box and everyone can go through it. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. So I just want to, you know, encourage everyone here. There is support out there when it comes to empowerment, when it comes to, you know, um, maximizing data and digital technology for any kind of project really. One Adita is, is one of them. We are currently expanding our network to other countries. We are also expanding you know, our programs because now we are looking, we have a research project that involves researchers across Africa. We are reporting on COVID-19 vaccination and you know, we are looking at having a series of sessions with researchers, working on fellowship with researchers and doing a lot of extensive work with um, 
um, data science experts as well. So thank you so much for listening to my short talk. And thank you, Anelda, for the opportunity. My colleague will also share a link to join Wana Data in the chat box and link to our website. I would also reach out to Anelda maybe to share some of your um, contacts with us so that we can invite you to our Pan-African Network um, events and share a lot of our initiatives with you so that we can start doing great work with you. Thank you, everyone.